the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Graciously loving Father, in all your wisdom, in all your love, in all the graces we receive upon you, blessing after blessing, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. Above all, we thank you for the presence of the people around us. May you bless them, Lord, in good health and in keen protection, Lord, as we continue to fight against this global pandemic. May we be able, Lord, to fully nourish our mind, body, and heart as we continue to achieve our aspirations and our dreams, all for your greater glory. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. John Baptist de la Salle, pray, pray for, for us. us. Jesus in our hearts. Forever. Forever. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Sige. Um, the rest of the other... Did you have class kagina? Wala. Wala, attorney. So, so Anish, attorney. Alright. Sangaga attorney. Asa sangaga lang. Okay. Okay. So the rest of the other other uh, the rest of the other people in your class do do wala na sila gana. Okay lang. They're not here. Or they're coming pa lang. Ah sige. Okay. So we deal with um our discussion first with First and foremost, the concept of uh, what we call marriage. Um, we're through with <coughs> we're through with the marriage regime. Please take note, Langid, the, the fourth marriage regime is the one where the union is not blessed with a valid marriage. So that's where the instance where the law would specifically provide what kind of property regime or relation would occur. Um, please take note the distinction between Article 147 and Article 148. Right? Now, dito na sa ato niya. Wait, sorry. Now, we go with our basic concept. Marriage. So basic points you need to know, including na nade ang sang last time ta, that you need to be able to be aware about the, the family code in general, huh? Right. So let's discuss under this topic. Um, the following. So, be able to know, not know, be able to memorize. Article 1. So, Article 1 is something that uh, you should hold as a fundamental uh, item for you to be able to discuss. Um, there is a concept for you to make comparison between what is considered as uh, ordinary contract and a special contract in the nature of a marriage. So marriage yeah, is a special contract. Whereas in ordinary contract, parties can range from two or more individuals. As to the parties involved, um, you can note that there can be more than one party in other contracts, but in marriage, it's an exclusive contract where only two parties are allowed or are involved. Now, this is of permanent union of which the dissolution cannot be, cannot be left to the discretion or any of the parties, all right? So the union between a man and a woman entered into in accordance with law, establishing what? Conjugal and family life. Marriage is the foundation of the family and is an inviolable social institution whose nature, consequence, and incidents are governed by law and not subject to stipulation. What is the exception? The one that we previously discussed, family regime or 
property regime or property relations can be fixed prior to the celebration of the marriage. All right? Now, in, in points that you need to understand, marriage is a basic civil rights of a man, fundamental to our very existence and survival. The freedom to marry has been recognized as a vital personal right towards the pursuit of man's happiness. Despite being a sac uh, sacred obligation, it is still considered as a special civil contract. Um, it is elevated to a higher status than ordinary contracts. What are ordinary contracts that you might be aware of? Number one, there can be contracts wherein a contract of employment. Whenever you get to be employed by some institution or some uh, individual, you may enter into a contract. But of course, you can simply end your contract in a different capacity. So for instance, I want to resign. I have a better employment that is going to be present next month. You cannot do that to the marriage. You would say, I found a better wife. I found a better girl. So marisign ko bilang your husband. No. That's why it has become an inviolable social institution. Something to which our state has personal interest, not just necessarily personal interest, but one that is given in a capacity where state needs to intervene. So a contract to marry, unlike other contracts, cannot be modified or changed once it is execu executed and it is formed between the parties, they cannot be altered. Uh, notice that <clears throat> in a contract, what we follow is the provisions under the law and under the family code, all right? So in, in, in part of the, the consideration here is that we are trying to establish the, the what we call the sanctity of that agreement entered into in a marriage contract. Now, other issues that you might need to have, it is a... Um, put na lang siguro sa other items here. Marriage between a rapist and a rape victim. <clears throat> if you will study criminal law, there is an instance wherein there, the, the dissolution of criminal liability can be made wherein if the raped victim would marry or allow the marriage of his rapist. So the subsequent marriage of the victim is a form of a condonation which will extinguish the criminal action or criminal liability of that individual. Okay, so points that you would need to consider. Please take note that while we're dealing with marriage, marriage is also considered as a social status. So long as you're not married, then you remain to be someone who is still single. What's the implication? One married is never abstract or a vacuum, but always to someone else. So a juridical decree on marriage status of a person necessarily reflects the status of one to the other in relation to other individuals. Um, if you are married, Technically, there are reservations under the law that you cannot do. Number one, contract subsequent marriages. Number two, um, dispose property that uh, is made without the consent of the other spouse. Um, there can be instances wherein your capacity to donate is also limited by reason that you have you are considered as a married individual. Okay? So marriage naman niya in international law the right to marry is a fundamental human right under international law 
even under the concept of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, that men and women of full age, without any limitation to their race, nationality, or religion, has the right to enter into a family life. Okay? So that's, we're talking about the concept under international law. Now, there can be other discussions containing marriage, but um, the salient point that you need to understand is that, again, marriage is <clears throat> not just an ordinary contract. Marriage is somewhat placed in a status that the law has vital interest because it's an inviolable social institution. That's why kabudlay magpaanal. Because ga intervene din ang state. All right. Um, part of the discussion on marriage is that <clears throat> we'll get to discuss laws governing validity of marriage. This you can relate when you're talking into the issues on Lex Loci Celebrationis. So be mindful that when you're trying to create the relationship of a husband and wife, the question is, um, do they understand that there requires a mutual love, as we've already discussed? Mutual love, respect, duties, liabilities for each of the relation. There must be a valid marriage. Now, um, let's see. we come to the terms under Article 2 and 3. Uh, very vital is are the requirements made and signified under the law. No marriage shall be valid. It's a declaration that is prohibitory. No marriage shall be valid unless the essential requisites are present. Legal capacity of the contracting parties who must be a male and a female. Mayroon yun, mga question. What if nagpa-sex change attorney? What if nag-change ang iya status? What if nag na siya? Then we will answer that later on. Essential is that consent must be freely given in the presence of the solemnizing officer. When is that? Made during a marriage ceremony. That's why you make the distinctions of essential requisite from a formal requisite. The formal requisite is enumerated under Article 3. Um, basic formal requisite, your solemnizing officer must be authorized. There it will enlist several several reasons or several individuals who can solemnize a marriage. Valid marriage license except in cases provided in chapter 2. Now, this can be tricky, but this has been a, kumaga, a vast source of our what we consider as questions when you're taking the bar. Marriage ceremony with, which takes place in the with the appearance of the contracting parties before the solemnizing officer and the personal declaration that they take each other as husband and wife in the presence of not less than two witnesses of legal age. So the marriage ceremony, you subdivide this to three other requirements. It takes place in the presence of the contracting parties it is, so, it is done before the solemnizing officer. There is a declaration that they take each other as husband and wife. And then the fourth one is that it must be attended by not less than two witnesses of legal age. Okay? So formal requisite. The absence of any of the essential or formal requisite. Please take note. Absence lang nila. Void na dayon. Okay? It's void ab initio. While we would consider what is a defect in the essential requisite, it will only be considered as voidable. Essential requisite 
what is the effect if there's an absence of consent that is freely given? Void. What if there's only a defect? Say for instance, the consent that he is giving was not made in the presence of a solemnizing officer. Then that becomes voidable. Irregularity, you attach it naman niya to formal requisites. The irregularity of a formal requisite will cause what? It will not affect the validity of the marriage. But note that the individual who is responsible for the irregularity may be civilly, criminally, and administratively liable. What do you mean by that? A concrete example is if the marriage license was obtained in fraud, such as you just paid a staff from the local civil registry to issue something, then that becomes an issue. Because in doing so, that person can be criminally liable and administratively liable causing the irregularity for the release of a marriage license. Um, later on, you would realize that there is a limit to the license. Okay. If I ask this in advance, how long is the life of a marriage license? Around 120 days. 120 days. 120 days. All right. So it's limited to a certain time. Sano siya must start ang 120 days? After the 10th, uh, the completion of the... 10th day publication. After that? 10th day After the publication. 10th day. Ang aras sa layi na da, aring diperin siya, sinadik kay kung ikaw ang nagpakasal, ikaw ang nag-apply sa inyong mga, uh, ano tawag, ng marriage license, it's actually upon the issuance of the marriage license. But under your provisions of family code, it's after the publication. But you can reconcile it nonetheless. So what happens if there is an expired marriage license? Nagpakasal ka. Expired na marriage license. Void, attorney. Is it void by reason that there is a defect in the essential merit, uh, essential, I'm sorry, uh, irregularity in the formal requisite? I think attorney yes. is irregular. Yes. Attorney. Yes. Is that irregular? Because yes. I think the solemnizing officer should check the marriage license. And if the marriage license is expired, therefore, he shall be uh, liable. Okay. So, yeah. Here's a principle of law. An expired marriage license is equivalent to a no marriage license. Therefore, it may take into effect as a void marriage on the same reason that such marriage license is no longer effective. Okay, so yeah, we're going advanced with ourselves, but it's a nice discussion actually when you're trying to... Attorney question. Yes, uh, we can. How about if the, if the, what well, this, if the couple have been co uh, cohabiting each other for more than five years, but it does not require a marriage uh, license? Yes, because it falls under the exceptions under chapter two. Uh, so uh, the the provision does not take effect on that special case or is that considered a special case attorney yeah that's an exception what's the question miguel oh i'm an attorney and just uh, affirming thank you attorney so in instances do not confuse this because in procedure 
you are given a declaration kung mag-declare ka, you are going to execute an affidavit of cohabitation. In the absence of a marriage license, the couple would be forced to execute an affidavit of cohabitation that they have been living together for five, at least five years as husband and wife, that they have no legal impediment to marry each other. So, isa na da siya sa mga i-consider nyo. Um, again, inaya kung gafol siya sa exception. Um, I, have ca- I had cases wherein nagpakasalang sila, they made declaration that they have lived as husband and wife, and then they would claim that they have been cohabiting only to that in truth and in fact they have never been engaged it's just that they did not want to go to the rigors of applying a valid marriage license now is that an absence of a marriage license or is that an issue of an irregularity to acquire a valid marriage license Uh, it is an issue of uh, irregularity attorney because uh, it was stated in fact that uh, they have not been, the fact that they have not been cohabiting with each other for more than five years. Okay. All right. So that can be an issue of an irregularity to secure a formal requisite. Okay. But, uh, well, sige lang. I'll assign to you certain cases so that we can reconcile everything. Okay. So, points you need to consider. First one is legal capacity. Under the new family code, the marrying age is 18 years old. If any of the parties is below 18 years old, the marriage is void. Even if there is consent. The contracting parties must not be related to each other relating to Article 37 and Article 38. So please try to memorize 37 and 38 because these are your references in terms of um, providing a decision whether it falls under void or voidable marriages. Void marriages or voidable marriages. All right. Now, legal capacity to marry is related to capacity to act under Article 39 of the Family Code, uh, sorry, the Civil Code, because it limits your family relations. Hence, an already married person cannot marry unless his previous marriage has been nullified, annulled, or in this case, falls under the bigamous marriages under Article 41 of the Family Code. Now, here's what you need to understand. If you married someone and you would claim that the marriage is void ab initio because there was no uh, butangta, ang gimpakaslan mo is 17 years old. You still proceeded to get married. And Later on, you realize that you're no longer in love with that person that you married. And so you would contract a subsequent marriage. Can you claim that since void of initial means it's already void from the very start, meaning it does not produce any legal effect or whatsoever, I can simply proceed and marry another individual? The answer to that is no. For purposes of remarriage, one needs to secure a decree of nullity. Even if ang ging pakaslan niya, even if their first marriage is already void. Again, for the purposes of remarriage, a decree of nullity or a judicial decree of annulment needs to be secured in order to 
validate the subsequent marriage. Uh, damo na diwa, SB. There are three instances nga may case na tungod kay abogado ang nagpakasal. King hambala niya lang niya ang isang uh, ay kay void to yung akon nga first marriage siya. Yeah. Hindi ko na kinanglan nga maghimo pa. Kay tungod, wala man to effect. Man. This barn. <laughs> so the issue that you would have to understand is that Uh, provisions relating to this and under jurisprudence claims already that there should be a decree for you to close that chapter in your life of your first marriage in order to move on to your subsequent marriage. Now, issues that you have surrounding here. Contracting parties must be of different sex. Marriage is a union founded on the distinction of sex. The law likewise provides that the contracting parties must be a male and a female. Trini, what is the effect of sex change? Arena. In Silverio versus the Republic, the issue here is whether a person who had a biological sex change from male to female through sex realignment surgery can amend his birth certificate to reflect a change in sex to get married to his partner. The Supreme Court ruled that it's not. They rejected the said petition and ruled that sex is determined by visually looking at the genitals of a baby at the time of his birth and is immutable and that there is no law legally recognizing sex realignment. However, there is a, an exceptional case, the Republic versus Kagandahan. Here, it's more of a congenital adrenal hyperplasia, which is a condition where the person afflicted has both male and female characteristics. Ano na siya ganyang short term sinade? When you have both male and female sex organs, Hermaphrodite. Um, Hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite. Buto? Hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite. Buto na ba ko nga isa? Intersex. Intersex. <laughs> Hermaphrodism. Uh, Hermaphrodite. So in this instance, um, they relax the law, the, the law, the law that they provide, because uh, here. One who is afflicted with both male and female characteristics and organs that thought genetically a female and secreted male hormones and had no breast can sought to amend the birth certificate from female to male. So the court ruled, we consider that the person as an intersex individual or an hermaphrodite granted the preference to which kind of sex he would prefer. So if he considered to be a male person, thereby allowing the amendment of the birth certificate of that person from female to male. Okay? Exceptional ang ginaya ang case ng kagandahan. The general rule, sex change or sex realignment by reason of whim or preference without any of a medical condition or pre-existing conditions such as the uh, co uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, then the general rule is that we will have, we will not allow sex change as basis for uh, validating a marriage. Attorney question, mm. how many times uh, are they allowed to change? Like if you have that If you are, if you have CH or uh, ano gani hypermodafia, not okay, uh, ano Afrod, uh, sorry, what's the term? Tongi ng Merkel, Aphrodite. Hermaphrodite. Ah, hermaphrodite. Yeah. Hermaphrodism. Hermaphrodism. How many times the attorney allowed? Once. 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 Lang. And what age? Uh, is it on the age of majority or upon birth? Um, Sa discretion of the parent. wala na siya actually being state because hindi siya manging gusto restrictive. It can be that at an early age, 
um, it came from the choice of the parents rather than the individual. So that can be a, be a problem. So as of now, um, the basic circumstance relating to such facts will have to be evaluated. Okay. All right. So authority of the solemnizing officer. Solemni solemnizing officer may be one of those enumerated in Article 7. Sino na sila? Article 7, incumbent member of the judiciary within the court's territorial jurisdiction. You need to understand that uh, judges who are part of the regional trial court only within, within his judicial region can he or she marry an individual. Ang judges naman niya sa lower courts, like primary courts, um, uh, MP, MPC, MPCC, or in short, uh, muna sila ang municipal trial courts, municipal trial courts in cities. Within sa city lang sila yan. Dapat nabilong ang both um, manugpakasal. So, in in... In this instance, there is a limitation on. Sige, can we jump? And I will jump to seven. Here. So, incumbent members of the judiciary within the court's jurisdiction. Um, what about those members in the judiciary attorney uh, are sa Court of Appeals, sa Supreme Court, Ombudsman? they can be allowed and their scope of jurisdiction is nationwide. Okay? So, ano, may mga problem. Pinaginahatag nga, what if retired ng judge? Eh, Siyempre, wala na siya authority. I, I, it was very funny wherein my batchmate ko nga nagpalapit sa akin, attorney, pwede ka nakapakasal sa amon? Ma hindi pa kuya judge. Ay, Judge lang na galing. Oo, judge. Unless nga nangin minister ko sa amon nga simbahan, pwede ta kay kasal. So that falls under the second part. Any priest, rabbi, imam, minister of any church or religious sect, duly authorized by his church or religious sect, registered with the civil registrar general, acting within the limits of his written authority, granted by the church or the religious sect, provided that at least one of the contracting parties should belong to that solemnizing officer's church or religion sect. So, dapat at least isa sa inyo na belong sa inang religion, sa inang uh, sect. Kaya turning kung kulto lang kami abiyat turning. Problem sinada, is your kulto registered? It sounds funny, but the requirement of religion or religious sect is it has to be registered. So say for instance, with no offense, ah, but this is actually considered as a cult, ang mga Rizalinos, uh, the ones that they consider Jose Rizal as a god, and then consider him as one wherein ang uh, iban sa ilaga, they, they, they're conducting or praying for, they're venerating Jose Rizal. So if they do that, questions in, are they sect registered? If not, then they do not have or possess any authority to do so. Third one, any ship captain or airplane chief only in cases that falls under Article 31 or what's Article 31? So, Articulo Mortis. Yeah. Mortis. Those that are conducted in Articulo Mortis. Okay. Number four, any military commander of a unit to which a chaplain is assigned in the absence of a chaplain during a military operation, likewise, only in cases that can be found in Article 32. 
any consul general, consul or vice consul in case provided there. So these are instances that belongs to uh, authority of the solemnizing officer. So it must be observed <clears throat> that it is not in the presence or absence of the solemnizing officer, which constitutes the formal requisite or requirement, but it is the absence or the presence of the authority of such solemnizing officer. So under the local government code, a mayor can be a solemnizing officer. So pwede, mayor. Paksal kay mayor. All right. Authority of the officer or a clergy shown to have performed the marriage will be presumed in the absence of any showing to the contrary. So kung clergy siya, patish ka mo nga pwede siya ka-perform, then okay lang. Solemnizing officer is not duty-bound to know whether the marriage license have been duly or regularly issued. This answers the previous question earlier. That a solemnizing officer is not duty bound to know whether a marriage license has been duly or regularly issued by the local civil registrar. All he needs to know is that a license has been issued by a competent official. Next, considering that the consent of the state is given through a solemnizing officer, duly authorized by the law, his or her very position as a marriage solemnizer is affected by public interest. That criminal penalties are even imposable against a person who solemnizes a marriage without authority. Gina penalize gan yung mga judges nga na retired na tapos hindi pang kasal pa niya mga iba niya tao. Very dangerous. Now, let's go to valid marriage license. Valid marriage license. In a valid marriage license, wait, let's go to valid marriage license. A valid marriage license must be issued by the local civil register at the place where the marriage application was filed. It has a lifetime of 120 days from the date of issue and is effective in any part of the Philippines. The date of issue is the date of the signing of the marriage license of the local civil registrar. Okay, so please be mindful of that. Deemed cancelled at the expiration of the 120-day period. Marriage license not effective if it will be used as a marriage license to be able to solemnize marriages abroad. Other requirements of marriage license are merely directory. The fact that a party to whom a license is issued is represented therein by the name of another, uh, again, is represented therein by a name other than his true name or had his name spelled wrongly will not invalidate the marriage solemnized in the authority of such license. I had a client before. Malapit siya. Terni, sala ang spelling sa ngalan ko. Ano kasala sa spelling sa ngalan mo? Kulang letter A. Okay lang na. The attorney, pwede niya na ako bulagan? Yan. Not an issue. So at least, you you would think that these are valid, uh, ano na siya, those are trivial questions. But, Really, there are people who are ignorant would ask you, the attorney, pwede ko na siya bulagan niya kaya sala niya yung spelling sa ngalan niya, sa kasal kami. Or proud pa siyang iya ang ngalan ang sala na pag-spell. Tiyan mo nagambal ko, hindi man na siya valid ground para i-anal mo ang iyong uh, kasal. Hindi kay attorney, sala. Hindi ni ako. Pamo ka na din. Pero nagpirma ka sa marriage contract mo. Ay ko, attorney, nagpirma Ating sa kabuang. Kung hindi to ikaw, ating nga nagpirma ka. Ah, kay Salabi ang ano. Kaya sa mind mo, gusto mo, kung hindi ni maging successful ang marriage niyo, may rason ka para maglagyo. 
Yeah, hindi mandatory niya. Kadokadlo lang siguro. Okay. Yung mga tuod ng istorya sa paya, sa ano, bukid. Commission of perjury or deception on the part of the contracting party as to their age in order to avoid statutory requirement of parental consent is not a cause to invalidate the marriage obtained through such license. So there are others who would falsify their age um, because in the marriage license, di ba, ages 18 to 21, anong kinanglan? Parental? Consent. And Consent. 21 above to 25? Parental advice. advice. Oh. Man. That's why very crucial din na yung mga blessings sa mga parents. Yung attorney, hindi gusto magpakasal. Hindi ko gusto. Hindi sila ni mama gusto magpakasal. Ko. Hindi ko nila tagaan sa parental advice or parental consent. So anong gusto nyo? Anong himoon nyo? Sige. Suggestion. A guardian, sir? Pwede. Legal guardian. Other guardian. Sige, ano pa? Mahula three months attorney. <laughs> Tapos mati- mapakasaliwat. Na? Ano pa? Asa mga, in- asa mga illegal ah? Mga dark, yung mga illegal. Patyo ko na lang parents ko eh. Para hindi na sila kahata. Grabe no. Para lang makakasal ka. Grabe. Yeah. Joke lang na hindi nyo ginapagimon. No, uh, no woman or man is worth than your parents. Please note that. So, be mindful of the consent and the advice given by parents for the issuance of a marriage license. Marriage ceremony, things that you need to know. The family code only recognizes a ceremonial marriage. This means marriages which are solemnized by persons duly authorized by the state. The family code does not prescribe any particular form of marriage ceremony. That's why kung magpakasal ka mo, hindi gikinanglan nga may prenup pictorial, hindi gikinanglan nga bunga ang kasal. Pwede lang sa Zoom attorney. Tapos naka-background lang be attorney. Kaya di ba hindi man prescribe any, any for, form of marriage ceremony? Ang marriage ceremony, pero required ka mo to be in the presence of the solemnizing officer. Ah, hindi pa de, like at the same Zoom room be. Like with the... Zoom kaya di ba sa mga muna, or the cyber church, mga muna sa mga issue na. Like, parehas ako mo, background. Jurisdiction. Hindi pwede. Sa... Sa Hall of Justice gani, sa parking lot yung gina-celebrate ng kasal subong. Katie, you really have to be in the presence of the solemnizing officer. So imagine nun mo, pakasal ta, ano, sa Zoom. Tapos pa makoton ka na, do you take him as your lawfully wedded husband? Nag-freeze ka. Nalingid, i-restart ka pa. Tapos na nawag kaya sa pare. Yes, father. Yes, father. Since siya yun, kayo nag-brand out ni Samuel. Uh, hindi. Dapat within. Why? It goes back to a more historical, cultural ano, significance. Nya, when you are making the ceremony, you are actually giving an oath. You are actually pledging that you will take each other as husband and wife and all that reason for it. And then at the same time, the solemnizing officer has an opportunity to examine whether you are coerced or not. Take note that in your essential requisite, consent must be freely given. And if my determination ang pare or sino man ang imong uh, solemnizing officer naging coerced ka lang, then the solemnizing officer can actually uh, intervene and claim that there is no consent freely given here. Yes, sir, Chen. Uh, attorney, I'm a question. I'm going to backtrack a little bit on Article 7. Mm. Uh, uh, 
Bali, first question na ito ni. Uh, pwede yung president makakasal, no? President? I mean, solemnizing, solemnizing officer. No. No, okay. Uh, other question na ito ni. Kay, uh, may na-question ni Blas Online Community isang last. Uh, bali, doon ka Articulo Mortis, man. Mm-hmm. Bali, ang fax is uh, on a plane. Uh, bali, doon sa gua na sa actually ka Philippines. Uh, easy ka Philippines. Mm-hmm. Uh, bali, ang one of the passengers is may judge. Iya, yeah, mga Pilipinas. May harapan pare. And of course, ang pilot. Uh, in, in, in an instance na may mag-articulo mortis nga marriage, uh, sino ang alumnize na? Sino ang? Alumnize. Ang ano, ano? Kapag sorry, Chappie. Uh, sino, sino ang mas alumnize? Sino ang mas alumnize nila? Sino ang pili nila? Ang oh? ah, managali yung question na ito ni, sino ang eligible? Eligible. Then technically, if it's under the provision on Article 31, it's the ship captain. By reason that number one, under siya sa concept sang Articulo Mortis. Then it's made between passengers or crew members. And there is that qualifying incident of being in Articulo Mortis. Ang judge naman niya, unless he is a judge of a court of appeals or the Supreme Court, then he can do it nationwide. But note that in that problem, it's already outside of his territorial jurisdiction of the Philippines. So, i-eliminate mo na siya. Sino po tong isa, Archel? Uh, pare. So, ang pare naman niya... Priest. Uh, he has to s- celebrate the marriage only if there is a marriage license. Okay, wala man sila marriage license. So at best, it is the ship captain who can solemnize the marriage. Right? Sige. Alright, next question. Wala na? Uh, bali, ma- i-agaway, for example, attorney, uh, military officer. So, hindi man sa pwede. Nga, yeah, how does he belong to the military encampment? Uh, let's say, yes, we attorney. Okay, t- ang scenario mo eh, Sarah, sila sa, ano eh, sa ship, sa airplane. And, it is no longer within the zone of the military operation. Ah, uh, okay. Si Pano B. Attorney, kung gin-choose nila ang nag-solemnize being the ship captain, bali, it's, it, is it still valid ang marriage? What do you think? Uh, I think valid. Okay, in good faith na. Ah, really? Valid ya po? Pero I don't know. All the other I don't know, attorney. Pero um, is not there. Sige. Study your family code. The answer is actually there. The answer is very practical. There was no authority from the solemnizing officer. That's why you need to look at the conditions on when is the authority operational for any of those individuals enumerated under Article 7. Okay? So say for instance, those instances, it falls under Article Mortis. Oh, so you need to look into that. Is Are they in Articulo Mortis or not? Right? Pero wala, there's nothing that prevents the individual to claim that uh, may pagpanggaanay nila. Pagpanggaanay lang mo yan eh. Sa dasun lang magpasal. Alright? <laughs> sige, thank you, attorney. Uh, sige, sige. Uh, attorney, affirmation lang. Uh, upon reading... Uh, the articles presented. Meaning, mas kaya no pa ang balon kasimbahan, like for the Catholic Church, for example, hindi pwede manal ang kasal nyo. If the state allows manal kasal nyo, maanal ga Japon. So, bali do pa kung sinusya ng church. Um, under civil law and under canon law. Okay? I'm familiar with our Roman Catholic uh, doctrine. 
So there are instances wherein pwede kaya ka paanal marriage mo sa church na canon law. And it doesn't mean and it doesn't follow that kung naanal ka sa church mo, maanal ka naman sa imong uh, civil marriage. But one of those that would persuade the courts is that if the determination to annul the marriage was also highly favored by the uh, tribunal of that church, then it will help them make the assessment that their findings is also conclusive upon them. But they would usually use that. But it, it's not automatic. So in the same, in the same vein, that an instance wherein the marriage in the civil civil law is annulled king annulled na sang sang courts and then wala ka pa ya ka pa annul sa church pwede kaya ka pakasal sa lain nga mode such as you're trying to get married again sa judge pakasal ka naman sa consul but you might be prevented from getting your ceremony or your marriage through the church wedding. So that can be an issue. Yes, Barry? Uh, attorney, may question lang ko. Diba, um, sa Articulo Mortis, the attorney, what if the solemnizing officer be, is hindi na makita sa both parties or like siya ang napatay the attorney, then according to Article 23, it is the duty of the solemnizing officer to furnish the original uh, a marriage cert. So what will happen to the marriage? The marriage will still be valid if it falls under all the requisites for Articulo Mortis. It's just uh, so, Sino mo, ano, attorney? Sino, like, mo, pro, ma process or, like, ano, sila lang. David, declaring that they were married. Kung wala yang, ano, kung say for instance, wala yang solemnizing officer for that, then they can, the, the spouses or the parties would execute it on their own, submit it to the local civil registry and have it recorded. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Thank you, attorney. Sige. Yes, Vince. Uh, excuse me, attorney. Uh, in, uh, since we're on the topics of Articulo Mortis attorney, mm-hmm. um, does the solemnizing officer need to also send it to the local civil registry office na na married sila? Or will, or is, or hindi na attorney? Uh, your question is marriage made in Articulo Mortis Yes, attorney. And then, the Ma- subsequent requirement to register it? Yes, attorney. Actually, the, the for the marriage to be registered as valid, primarily, again, as a rule of thumb, it is the sino gane, of, uh, solemnizing officer who would submit and the surrounding circumstance on why, on how uh, such marriage took, took place without the benefit of a marriage license. Okay, attorney. Okay. Sige, other questions? Gusto nyo din magpakasal ka mo? Attorney, uh, na, no, no, curious ako. Hmm. Required gina nga mag-gis gig ko mo sa kasal, no? Like, let's say, ma lips to lips could be attorney. Usually, Hindi ko na attorney makita, I've attended mga around three weddings sa siguro. Tapos every time matabo na attorney, mga photographer, otro man to gati nung pakanay. So yeah. kakahuya, ang isang couple, mga mga attorney. Required gano'y attorney, or pwede like do sa forehead lang, or ano. Oo, eh. Chansa mo na na. Hindi yeah. Nang, it's, it's based on the ceremony. The, uh, though there is nothing wrong with that, Ang issue, ang, kung ang issue mo is kinang laging mag-kiss, well, that is to manifest, wala? That there's the idiomatic expression, you seal it with a kiss. Kung baga, that's the pirma. Alright? Ano pa? 
so attorney question area uh, kay of course we've read the case man of Chi Ming Choi nga ti uh, may one year may one year allowance kung before kung maghanimon or you could uh, amo na attorney like a period bala ka validity of honeymoon attorney uh, is that only one year kaysa kay Chi Ming Choi mga one year na problema mo so like after yes, because I, I, after I, I, one year maka Yes, attorney. Pwede na, like, depende lang sa like, two years after B, or dapat after one year, good na. You go back to the very premise of when does your mutual obligation commence? Just like when you're mute, the, the, the same with your economic or property relation should commence the mutual obligations that we've previously and earlier discussed before marriage should commence also immediately after the celebration of the marriage. Oh, thank you, Tor. Nikki, much agang ko na doon ka-pressure ko sa muna eh. So, muna ba lang? Hindi na-pressure sa iyo mo? Hindi ba si may limit na tapos hindi ma-void na ako ng ano na. Ng ano, Tor. Ari, ah. Pakita ko yan. Uh, kung ano ka importante ang kiss sa kasal. I'm going to show you my same day edit sa ako niya kasal. Na lang ni siya. Commercial lang ni siya. Inspiration ni attorney. This morning I woke up and I'm in this place. A place where everything feels right. My heart is calm. My soul is lit. My thoughts are positive and my vision is clear. I am at peace. At peace where where we've been. At peace with what we've been through. And at peace where where we are headed. <laughs> very memorable moment in our lives. I now believe that what God meant when he said everything has a magnificent and awesome purpose. respect and honor you, but also do the same with everyone you value, everything you treasure, and every single time you spend. Because these are the things that complete you. Because having you in my life is God's greatest blessing. Because I have never felt so much love, respect, and honor by the way you have given me. You're the one I've waited all my life for You're the one I'd lose it all and die for And as the sun transforms into the moon I pray we never lose the fire
becoming better versions of ourselves every day, and when at some point we become overwhelmed by the many challenges we might face, I know God will see us through, and I pray that neither of us will let go. I'm so proud of the man that you have become, and I'm so grateful for what we have together. When it's hardest, it won't paralyze us. When it feels like we've lost our way, we may bend the dark and we will never break. choose to love you beyond the pain, grief, or sorrow, beyond words, actions, and thoughts. I will always choose to respect you <laughs> beyond your imperfections, beyond my frustrations. down the aisle as your bride but now I realized I'm even more thrilled to walk back down the aisle as your wife you have taught me two important lessons one is to live simply the other is to love deeply I know this is how our marriage is going to be simple but deeply meaningful and in every sense of the word I love you for you have defined love in a language that I can clearly understand thank you and I love you is all for you It's all for you All right. Okay. So, na mobra mo reaction paper party sa akin niya. Kasal, okay? And I just wanted to share to you guys this this uh there is no greater I mean I I come from the standpoint of what marriage is. Uh, and though seeing that actually made me reflect okay hey, you know what we did not go through the process nga yeah, somebody had to process our marriage license. We really had to do it on our own. Nagpa-seminar pa kami sa ano na Commission on Population nag ano lang yun kami yah every detail of taking the the process of uh, taking the marriage license ginkwa ginay na mo because we wanted to walk down how important the process is and so it's something that you would be able to understand also by the time you get to marry and so si Miguel do nakitake kin sa yow no I I just really wanted to share that because important na siya na we're talking about marriage and then for some it it it's like a fairy tale and then our idea is that you'd look into there's certain marriages that can be voided kadamo kabongga sang kasal mo dayon bulagan mo lang dayon so that's just, these are some of the realities we have to work on to okay sige di na tagani uh, so mo na Kung pakasal ka mo, imbitaron nyo man ko. Imbitaron ko sa mga kasal nyo. Binata. Okay, marriage. <laughs> witnesses in a marriage ceremony. Here you need to understand that the two witnesses must be of legal age. Huh? The Supreme Court has already ruled that the absence of witness is merely an irregularity which will not render the marriage void. Irregularity lang siya. 
Okay. So whether the absence of a witness. Okay. Yes. Sure. Um, attorney, question, attorney. So witnesses of legal age. Uh, at age when the when the marriage was commenced, attorney, or in case attorney na my question basically is. Um, what if attorney na, na minority siya at the time of marriage, but then it was found out attorney na, na uh, let's say two years later, ara na siya sa majority age. And okay, I mean, is he a valid uh, witness attorney or in the. Yeah, at the um, if the Supreme Court has already ruled na kung wala gani witness, absence of witness, is already considered as not voidable. Valid ya po niyang marriage. Okay? If for this instance the witnesses are not of legal age, then it will not affect the validity of the marriage. Okay? But the the requirement so that there could be there would be no irregularity is that it is important that the witnesses would be in their legal age. Okay, so at least para mindful lang ta. Now, we go to common law marriages not recognized in the Philippines. Please be mindful that a common law marriage may be defined as non-ceremonial or informal marriage by agreement entered into by a man and a, a woman having a capacity to marry ordinarily but without compliance with such statutory formalities as those pertaining to the marriage license. Yes, Josh. Hi, sorry, wala ko galing uh, lower hand attorney, sorry. Such agreement must be coupled by consummation which includes at least cohabitation of the husband and wife and the reputation is such a way that the public recognizes their marital status. Common law marriages recognized in England, in the U.S. have never been and are still not recognized in the Philippines. There is, this is so because the new civil code in the family code expressly and mandatorily provides that the intervention to a valid marriage ceremony as an ecclesiastical or civil functionary authorized by the state to solemnize marriage constitutes one of the indispensable requisites for a valid marriage. Um, the, the, the reason for a marriage ceremony is very much an announcement to the world that you are accepting the obligations as husband and wife. So imagine yun na, uh, sino sila ang sa Game of Game of Thrones? Sino yes, tayo Game of Thrones? Yes, Ni Jon Snow. Si Rhaegar Targaryen. Uh, si Rhaegar Targaryen. He secretly married Sino gani? Nga Stark? Uh, Lyanna Stark. Si Lyanna Stark. So, at that instance, the public is not being made aware of such implication. So, something like this is also being avoided in concept. Right? Next. The absence, defect, and irregularity in essential requisites. So, please take note. Generally, absence of any of the general or formal requisites of a marriage renders such marriage what? Null and void. And the marriage license, which has already automatically expired, is not a valid marriage license, as what I've mentioned last time. There thereby making any marriage undertaken on the basis of such alleged license void. Okay? Do you note that again, expired na doesn't have the effect. In such case, there is absence of a valid marriage license. Marriage by proxy solemnized here in the Philippines is likewise void because of the absence of the essential requisite that consent must be freely given and made in the presence of the solemnizing officer and in the absence of a formal requisite that the contracting parties must declare each other as husband and wife. Marriages, except the marriage uh, marriage license requirement. Anong instances nga wala kinanglan sang marriage license? 
as you've mentioned and you've studied marriages in Articulo Mortis, marriages of two contracting parties living in places where there are no means of transportation to enable them to appear personally before the local civil registrar, marriages among Muslims and other ethnic cultural minorities performed in accordance with their practices, and then marriages of couples without any impediment to get married living together as husband or wife for at least five years, right? These are instances where in marriage licenses are not required, right? Be able to know that. Now, what else? Another exception is marriage solemnized by a person without the authority to solemnize marriage provided that either one of the contracting parties believed in good faith that such solemnizing officer had the proper authority. Defects in the essential uh, requisites of marriage make the marriage merely annullable and voidable. Defects, ha? Mag-defect. Lain ang defecto, lain ang absence. Okay? Specifically, these defects are enumerated in Article 45 and 46 of the Family Code. Irregularities in the formal requisites do not affect the validity of the marriage. A judge who solemnizes a marriage without having been shown a valid marriage license and merely requires the submission of a marriage license after the marriage ceremony is considered to be administratively liable. Some irregularities which do not affect the validity of the marriage. Are my example? Absence of two witnesses of legal age during the marriage ceremony. It will not, it will not render the marriage void. Huh? Irregularity that does not affect the validity of the marriage. Kung ang witnesses mo not of legal age, no issue. Valid job. Other instances, Ariel. Absence of marriage certificate. Absence of a marriage certificate doesn't invalidate a marriage. No attorney. Sorry, Ara. Uh, no. Archan, ano? Uh, you asked a question, attorney, if it invalidates the marriage. Uh, no. Mm, yeah. All of this list does not invalidate a marriage, but these are irregularities. Sa formal requisites. Marriage solemnized in a place other than the public chamber of the judge or in open court, in church, chapel, temple or in the office of the consul general or consul, vice consul. It does not invalidate the marriage. That's why there are certain judges nga very particular nga sa court lang nila. But if the judge is invited to celebrate or solemnize it outside but within his territorial jurisdiction, it will not invalidate the marriage. Irregular lang siya, but it will not invalidate it. Another, issuance of a marriage license in a city or municipality, not the residence of either of the contracting parties. Why is that not a reason to cause the void? Why? Because the marriage license is effective anywhere in the Philippines, di ba? As you read, 120 days, effective nationwide. But the issue here, attorney, is that they're not residents of the city or the municipality. Mas kina, kay ga-apply sila yung license. Parehos mo nablang uh, hindi ka taga-bakulod, mag-apply ka license sa Manila for your driver's license. Does that invalidate your driver's license? Simply because you were able to acquire your license outside of your actual residence? No. Unsworn application 
for marriage license. Wala ka mo nag-execute sa affidavit. Yes, sir? Yes, sir. Nang check to, no, sir, nga wala. Nang it does not invalidate ng IMO marriage license kung nag, wala ka nag-apply sa IMO. Ganyan nga city, bless sir. Ako nag-apply ka sa iban, sir. Kay hmm. may mga cases. Mana, sir, mo nga gakita. Ga, Kumang, sir, nga kay sa kay tita, nga mga taga dreamers sila, sir, pero gaplay sila sa Bacolod, sir. Yeah. Tapos, uh, oh, muna, sir. Palagi na siya, ka. So, kay tita, number one again, thank you for validating Para. that. My yes. the issue of the application still runs through the same requirement of publication. Ah, okay. E, ang problema, malangin na nade, ang sa iba, nang balo nila, nga sala na siya, kay tungod hindi kagin taga dira, dapat dira kagin, hindi na siya automatic. It doesn't happen. So it's expanding your uh, knowledge over this. Next, failure of the contracting parties to present original birth certificate or baptismal certificate. It will not invalidate the marriage. Irregular lang siya, yeah, pero it will not invalidate. Failure of the contracting parties between the ages of 18 to 21 to exhibit consent, parents or persons having legal age to them in the local civil registrar. Irregular lang siya, pero it will still validate the marriage. Failure of the contracting parties between the ages of 25, 21 to 25 to exhibit. Parental advice, still, valid ang marriage. Irregular lang siya. Failure to undergo marriage counseling. Doesn't matter. Marriage is still valid. Failure of the local civil registrar to post notices. Naya makasuha, naya local civil registrar for it. Issuance of marriage license despite the absence of publication. Wala niya pong kaso. You know, honestly, isang nag-seminar kami ito sa Commission on Population. May nag-attend sa seminar na mo niya, naka-wedding dress na siya. Kaysa hapon, iyak la. Uh, sa amutong adlaw, iyaman niya kasal. Te ang gahatag sa seminar, gamba siya, gaka-pressure ko diyo. Kaya gatulok si madam sa akon, kag si sir, ang aton niya... <laughs> ang aton nga seminar, 2 hours ti dapat. Ti kigahulak na si Judge sa ila ko na sa ano. Ti anon ko pa ni, ti siyempre, pero mahan ko na lang yun ni. Ti magpot-mangpot sila doon yun. Ti okay lang na. Ti irregular siya, pero it will not invalidate the marriage. Failure of the contracting parties to pay the prescribed fees for the marriage license. O ay giniakasa. Failure of the person solemnizing the marriage to send copies of the marriage to the local civil registrar doesn't affect the validity of the marriage. Failure of the so local civil registrar to enter the application of marriage and licenses within the registry book. It will not invalidate the marriage. So here, Breach of promise to marry is not an actionable wrong, but preparation for the marriage and the publicity is palpably, palpably and unjustifiably contrary to good customs. Now, here's some class discussion that I'd like to emphasize. What is prohibited under trafficking laws in making uh, women? Uh, let's skip that. Laws assume trafficking is an overt act, but of course is co covert. Marriage is a status because you are not married in a vacuum. When you are, when you change your status, there's a need to inform the world since you are married to somebody. Here, divorce equals to a marriage is subsisting. Annulment, it is no longer existing. But when you're talking about nullity, decree of nullity, the marriage is void of initial. Annulment, valid until it is being annulled. So certain emphasis on sex versus gender. Male and female is gender. Man and a woman, by reason of your external genitalia, you, are considered it, you have considered it as sex. Distinctions open the doors for gender identities. 
So legal capacity goes into being male and female. That's why it's not that gender lang. For cases of mistake of identity, what is being affected is the aspect of consent. Formal requisites may be waived in marriage, solemnized abroad, act of solemnizing, however, is never waived. All right, so we'll continue with our discussion next Thursday. Questions? Questions? Yes, Josh. Uh, attorney, question, attorney, as to the rule of distance, attorney, let's say, uh, uh, attorney, na, uh, uh, if, if a couple has no means of transportation, they cannot uh, uh, get a marriage license, they are still, they can still validly get married, attorney, but what is the rule of distance, attorney? As to... Within reasonable distance. Within reasonable distance. Uh, Say, for instance, number, is there, one, uh, number one, the proximity and accessibility can be a factor as to distance. Um, say, for instance, um, I remember that there were marriages solemnized in a very small island in Batayan. They did not require the marriage license by reason that it's a very small island located there. Number two is that they do not have access to the local civil register. They have to go to the nearest municipality. So that can be an issue that would justify. So looking at it, so long as it would fall under the four exceptions where marriage license is not required, and you could validly justify that, then it can be a cause or a reason to accept a valid marriage license. The purpose of the law, why a marriage license need not be obtained, is based on sound judgment. Diba? Mapatay ka na? Gusto mo na magpakasal? Wait, marriage license. Kwa to anay. So, very important for you to consider. Right? Thank so, you, you like, mo, Make sure nyo nga, you, you've gone through most of the process and all. Right? Pero sa nanda, kung may kilala ka mo, magpakasal, tapos ginahungod-hungod niya nga, wala na kuwa marriage license. Makuto mo siya, may plano ko liguro nga bayaan siya the future. Right? Oo, kahit basi basically hindi effective ang marriage. Eh, Amo na siyang may mga hesitations. Which means consent is not freely given. Yeah. Sige lang, we'll continue with the other discussions. Need. Any other questions? Questions? Wala na. So with that, we'll continue with our discussion. Again, please memorize. Article 1, and then read and follow up with all the other requirements we have. Okay? May Jesus in our hearts. Forever. 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 Do last me, get out. Forever, attorney. Forever. Okay. How about to get the CR? Goodbye. Yes, attorney. All right. Go, go. Thank you, attorney. Thank you, attorney. Thank you, attorney. Thank you, attorney.